Welcome to this video. Uh, in this video, I will share uh, 10 practical tips, insights about how you can introduce a 20 minute or 30 minute host to transform session in a very effective way. And the reason that I uh, contribute this information to you is that after four years of experience, me and other practitioners came to realize that how you introduce the the session itself uh, already determines like I don't know 50 plus percent of the impact so knowing this it's very important for you even before you start applying all these exercises in your work uh, practice uh, which will follow up in the next uh, videos I would first like to give you some insights um, which are practical uh, but also um, yeah, focused on how to behave in a certain situation so you're prepared to uh, get the best out of your first uh, session or maybe you've provided sessions before and my aim is not to give a blueprint here and to say how the world works um, it doesn't work like that but I would love for you to avoid the well the beginners mistakes that we made in the last couple of four years and uh, for you to feel more comfortable and therefore to make more impact and who knows because of that the sessions will resonate uh, with your work context and uh, people will start following these up so uh, that will be great um, yeah so let's go to uh, the first practical practicality tip so team up if you provide a session for the first time uh, make sure that you're not um, yeah you're not you don't feel isolated or by yourself uh, as an early adapter who wants to do things differently uh, which is very noble but it's always nice for various reasons to have people that support you uh, mentally but also just being there in the space um, first of all you get a feedback loop very practical but if there's an insider in the group um, you get some feedback uh, by this person and next time you can improve your session for the better um, second of all uh, these sessions the whole pur purpose of these sessions is not the sessions on itself uh, the purpose is actually to create to start a movement right to start a community within your organization or whatever context you're working to work with more people that might maybe provide these sessions in the future or to walk with the outcome of these sessions and to make uh, new stuff happening so um, again it's very important that you create this movement and you don't do it yourself and you, yeah, you gather a group of like-minded um, and, and fire starters or early adopters, whoever you want to call them. And um, yeah, also very smart to start with the low-hanging fruit. Those people that are, all, that are already open for new ways of work and uh, how this can be facilitated in the process uh, for ongoing innovation to occur. And another very important point why coalition of change makers is important or a pool of people as we say is that uh, yeah it brings in the sustainability and the consistency of sessions uh, we used to provide these sessions on a weekly basis uh, in the first location in Amsterdam where I hosted these sessions and we were with a group of five with all our own expertise and we from different work fields that kept the dynamics uh, very beautifully uh, in the sessions um, the diversity I should say but if I was ill or not there because I had to work elsewhere, there were still people, you know, providing these sessions. So also when participants cannot participate on the spot, they can might choose, um, yeah, the next week as an option to join one of these sessions. And uh, yeah, they're not, uh, uh, they're not limited in uh, joining it now or never. And some people need some time. They need to hear some rumors, some uh, good experiences of others, and then next time they might join. Um, but let's not go too much in detail, otherwise this video takes too long. So invitations. If you send out the invitation on forehand, that's a very wise thing to do. You can do it, of course, online via email, newsletters, Facebook groups, um, maybe your organization has an intranet or jammer as they call it sometimes so make use of that software that's already there and uh, yeah cheer um, cheer up uh, the people that might are interested uh, and, 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 and and yeah prepare them a little bit on forehand because yeah this is something new they need to read a little bit maybe where it is about 
um, and uh, yeah, make them enthusiastic on forehand. Um, and of course, you can also work with word of mouth. Uh, word of mouth that works really well too. So if you have provided the session, make sure you always have cards with you, or somehow um, write down your email address. Somehow people can touch base with you, and they can invite their group of people again to join the session next time. So you really get this, uh, yeah, emerging crowd, so to speak, uh, which is really cool if you can facilitate that. Another thing is when you invite people. Pick one clear objective, which is your focus also for the session. Um, yeah, host and transform is quite a holistic concept, uh, systemic transformation from a personal team, group, organizational and societal level. Um, this, this is not easy to grasp for everyone, maybe only for the insiders that work uh, in the field of uh, leadership development and innovation. Um, just uh, keep it very simple and bold uh, for people to understand what you're saying. So, for example, um, yeah, at, at B Amsterdam, um, I provide sessions and I often talk about meet relevant encounters to lift your business. Uh, another example is um, a woman working at KLME, which is the Weather Broadcast Institute in the Netherlands. She says strengthening strengthening your internal network in your organization or in your team. Um, the province of North Holland, they mentioned move beyond uh, the organizational walls. Not, let's not reinvent the wheel and let's uh, meet up together to uh, prevent this. Um, and also use your own common sense, you know, maybe you wake up to experience the new, you know, this could be a clear objective as well, or get energized in the morning, uh, let's drink coffee in a new way, um, you know, uh, sky is the limit, but, but, but be really clear, don't go into specifics yet, after the session, the questions will pop up, people might want to know more, and then of course you're prepared to, to give them more, uh, insights and more and you give the session even more body and framework uh, but don't um, yeah don't get all the information out there at once it will overwhelm people so exclusivity exclusive exclusive exclusivity 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 also very important Exclusivity, also very important. Uh, people uh, want to feel special and uh, they want to feel invited for your session and uh, maybe they're the special chosen one. Very nice at the province of North Holland, they came with the idea to call it the, the secret society. So people were invited for this uh, session uh, and, and within a certain time frame, they could uh, reply on it. So that gave them the extra stimulus to, uh, to respond to the message. Because nowadays everyone is busy, right? Who has time to join something they don't know? So make sure you make it uh, uh, special and you seduce them a little bit. It's like uh, how they do it with sales and marketing, you know, make it a uh, limited offer, uh, limiting seatings, um, um, limiting time where they can, uh, they can actually enroll. Um, so yeah, make use of that. For example, here you see network moment. This is what uh, one uh, innovator in the province of North Holland did. She actually is a, also a graphic uh, uh, harvester, as they say. So she made this beautiful poster and yeah, made it resonate as part of the uh, part of the organizational culture, which is really cool. Um, yeah, and if you're a trainer. Of course, integrate it in your meetings or in your training or in your workshop that you already uh, have scheduled, um, and then uh, yeah, you can have this as a as a part of of your of your uh, program. Um, diversity, uh, heterogeneous audience. So, in, uh, invite people from throughout the whole organization. I would say if you work in an organization, as they call it. Uh, from the multi uh, governance approach, so you connect different organizational layers by doing that, connecting the operation with the management team, for example, but also interdisciplinary, you know, between disciplines, between, I should say, concerns or 
between departments, between teams, or even offices, um, uh, etc., venues, where people can actually learn from each other, because half of the time we're doing the same stuff. So why not engage and get the, um, get a more lean way of work? And um, besides that, you know, I'm aware of people being representative of teams. Of uh, you know, that's why we have managers uh, and too many of them nowadays, as they say. Um, but a manager cannot make sure that you have uh, you feel aligned or engaged with another person from another team. That is something that can only be caused by you intrinsically. So that's why these sessions are so beautiful, is that it engages people from all walks of life, from all walks of the organization, and even maybe stakeholders from abroad, you know, or from outside the organization, sorry. So maybe um, your potential customer, or people that might in be interested in becoming a business partner could be anyone uh, that is interesting for your work context. Um, yeah, and also an extra reason why this is so important to bring in the diversity is that the world is quite complex nowadays. Um, there's more parties that uh, from different uh, cultures, uh, nationalities, um, um, that have a different background, share different norms and values that need to work together to get uh, to execute a shared mission. Think of the ministries, you know, one ministry is working on finance, the other, the other on social, um, uh, social issues. Um, but sometimes they they share the same mission, but mission, but they work in contradiction towards one and the other, uh, simply because they execute things in a different way. And it's a shame that they don't know this because then, yeah, they are not uh, making uh, use of the full potential of the organization by sharing these insights. So if you, yeah, and also to validate your assumption about possible projects or products, it's always nice to learn by networking and getting new insights in um, that can be relevant for your uh, for your uh, surroundings. Very concrete example is as well, is that the province North Holland gets uh, nowadays managers and people from the operation to join the sessions together. So they already get more aligned. Um, and uh, yeah, there's more connectivity between one and the other because there's a lot of perception about the people working in the field or, or the managers, they must be top down. So if you see the human face behind uh, whom you're actually referring to, um, yeah, things can work out way more smooth than when you don't see each other. In the end, it's also about investing your time in people um, and to get to know them and to create likability or understanding. And these sessions do that in an accumulative uh, way or in an accelerated way, I should say, very fast. Um, another example is of the HAM, is one of the schools um, that I trained lectures. And one of the directors of the schools uh, came, came to talk with uh, one of the lectures. And uh, he was ex asking her advice about his leadership. He felt a bit insecure about his performance and he needed some insights. And she was flabbergasted and honored at the same time that, you know, this director was asking for his input. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, this is very, uh, very special if you can create um, this environment where people can be really humble and open and, and do not, um, yeah, on, um, feel intimidated or undermine other people because of simply they're having a different profile. They made different choices in their lives. That's why they do what they do, and they are talented in different ways. That's it. Uh, there's nothing more about it. Respect for everyone at the same time. So um, another nice example is that because of these sessions, there was also an entrepreneur that met his new team members and his investor. So you can imagine if you do these sessions with entrepreneurs, investors, uh, possible partners, uh, maybe someone wants to take over a business, etc. Um, yeah, you get uh, you get this this great uh, collision of, of skills and interests that can uh, yeah that can um, synergize with one and the other. So I have to speed up a little bit. Translate uh, to your own work practice. 
of course it's uh, it's very important to to understand what are your what is the context you work in at the moment um, do people know each other or not um, what what is your uh, yeah you have to become a little bit of an anthropologist in that sense to be aware of the challenges or uh, how to translate this in your work field so for example one of the practitioners she provided a session in an organization that is not her she's an interim manager and um, yeah she was doing a great job her first session and she ended up the session with a powerful question why do you do what you do and the people in the team felt a little bit lost like what do you mean with that question you know what level do should i interpret it and uh, well after that she came to realize hey next time i should ask why do you do what you do within your team because those people work together every day so why not making that extra step to make it more concrete for the people so um um, yeah, and from now on, there's other people in that organization that will also provide sessions because they have those insights. And again, I think that's the advantage of integrating these sessions in your organizations and let others walk with it uh, because they know they are the anthropologists, they have all the information, um, as they call it, the undercurrent, you know, the stories that are there and often not on paper or to be read in policies or strategies so don't underestimate that the, that the stories are out there and people can uh, know what they what they can do best so context is everything and what context are you what works in this context does not have to work in the other context and it can be just you know a very simple way of you phrasing a question or posing something that can make a difference you know um, so be aware of that, you know, selling uh, selling ice cream um, maybe in, in, in Antarctica is, is not the best uh, strategy, you know, and um, uh, so make really sure that there's a need for what you're doing and in which context you are uh, providing this session, I should say. Um, Another example is a lecture that uh, wants her her students to, to to become more participative, to participate more in in the class in the class and outside the class. So she is actually translating it to her work situation like that. How do I get students more active and more responsible for their own learn for their own learnings and actually do make their homework and do participate and do not only blame that things are not okay, uh, but make a difference themselves and stand, stand for it. Um, yeah, and there's other, uh, you know, other examples like uh, executives can uh, ask their um, employees to become, to take more initiative, to become more uh, vital, etc. So it really depends where you're coming from, what is your role, and what uh, what is the context you work in, and what is your objective. Engage the skeptic and the judge, uh, and the fearful. Engage the skeptic, the judge, and the fearful. Very important, before you start a session, it's very powerful if you, um, uh, if you phrase very briefly, and not in a paternalistic way, that you need people to be open to experience something new, and that everything is perception. Our whole life is perception and, and based on self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, if, if I look outside right now, I cannot see what's in the back. And what I see outside becomes my reality. So if those people that, you know, want to join your session are only thinking about what you are doing wrong or, uh, I don't know, they have that or they already know this or, you know, nobody can tell me what to do. 
Um, they're not open and you can work as hard as you can and do brilliant things but their minds are simply not open i had a two the other time and i forgot to introduce this part so it remind me again while making this uh, this um slide these slides it's very important to shortly phrase i would love to invite you to leave your judgments or skepticism for what it is and start uh, this session with an open mind to see the world through baby's eyes as they say and uh, to participate uh, with me and to experience uh, what is there to experience and then reflect on it and not already on forehand because that will kind of yeah steal the thunder of the whole of the whole impact of the session and this is also a beautiful life uh, metaphor i think you know expectations or judgments about people the more you judge, the bigger it becomes. And before you know, it's reality. So yeah, this is what you created yourself. I like this image. It's not denial. I'm just very selective about the reality I accept. Um, it's true. It's uh, You have a choice in that. But let's not go into that for now. Okay, point five. Manage time. Very important. I'm not the queen in this, but I become better at it. Uh, respect people's time you know um, if there's something new this just if you say oh it's just a 30 minute session or 20 minute session you know be concise stay uh, adequate and stay reliable in that sense um, and there's a beautiful trick what you can do if you need more time because you know often the best things in life come spontaneously right you cannot really plan it and prepare it and sometimes you have to reschedule things things to really embrace that moment so if you're in a session and you see that the time is ticking by and you only have 20 five more minutes left for example uh, but you see there's a lot of engagement uh, you can always say okay guys we have uh, five more minutes i would love to do two more rounds of the last exercise um, people that are up for it please stay people that have other um yeah other uh, schedules uh, and they have to be elsewhere also feel invited uh, to uh, to leave and thank you very much for joining the session and i hope i see you next time um because it might be true you know they might have a meeting or something they have to uh, have to join so uh be truthful for that and respect people's uh, time and you know there's always a way to stretch once there was a guy uh, that told me jess i would really love to join your session but to be honest your sessions always take longer than 30 minutes and i don't have this time right now and he actually uh, yeah made me realize yes i i do i do uh, i'm so enthusiastic and i see what's happening i do take more time so what i did since then is uh, exactly what i just told you but the funny thing is that I told him, okay, five more minutes and people that want to stay, please stay. And the same guy that just told me that he had other priorities stayed in the session. Another hour he was talking with, uh, I don't know, a potential customer, I think. Um, so he shifted it, uh, he shifted it his, pro um, his priorities, which is very nice to see that suddenly this conversation was more important for him than whatever he had to do and was and had planned ahead. So to create space for for people that are that really have to leave and are on schedule and also for new things to arise, uh, this might be a really good way to do it. Positivity, very important. Uh, I think everything is um, everything is energy, and um, if you start a session with energy within you, I mean, I'm not saying that you should jump around. Um, positive energy there's no way people can reject you or you know feel I don't know disencouraged or something um, if you just ground it and have a positive energy and and, and see that uh, you can make you can turn the uncertainty into something positive uh, then you're fine of course it's easier said than done uh, but try to train your mind to see the good in every every situation I should say because you should set the example if you try to fix the whole session and to fix the outcome etc um, you're not practicing what you're preaching which is experiential learning and that's um, something that you cannot always um, grasp on forehand um, 
in my other programs that are integrated now in various business schools I also talk about agile mindset and behavior and what I mean by that is to have a supportive mindset and behavior in all times if that's possible so whenever there's a disappointment or there's something along the way that doesn't go as you hope for you can uh, you can see it from a different perspective and turn it around to something positive um, which is not always easy but you become more skilled at it as you cannot change the situations anyway you can only control your own feelings so you should always work on yourself on your own personal development i should say and learnings rather than trying to control others so keep that energy with you if there's people that are not super enthusiastic then that's what it is um, and become uh, agile focus uh, be in the here and now that's also a beautiful uh, concept i should say um, be really present you know there was one practitioner she started a, the name game a very easy fun game where people connect that have never met each other based on funny words and um, some participants were like yeah but i cannot think of an ideal word and it's not good enough etc and then she continued the session which is fine uh, on the same hand, on the same time, if you're really present, you will notice that people already finding it difficult just to spit out a word that suits them, which can be any word, also shows that, uh, yeah, that they have a hard time by verbalizing things um, and get knowledge across that is about them. And it has to be perfect. So what does it mean if you're a lecturer in your front of students that are all different, that have different demands, and you have to really align with them in the moment and really feel engaged. If you only think with your head, everything has to be perfect what I say, wow, you have a tough cookie there. So this was already an example that is a little present for you as a host, as a facilitator of these sessions, you can work with like, hey, does anyone experience that as well? that you find it difficult to find a perfect name what does it mean how can you translate this to your own work practice what can you do with it i'm not saying you should do this all the time because it becomes kind of a you know like psycho analyzing people thing uh, but it could be a beautiful present especially if you feel there's time for more reflection so really focus on the here and now and leave your schedule and what you have planned ahead on the side for a bit because it's just a toolkit you know treat it as a toolkit not as something you that is fixed and you have to do from a to z um, uh, and be open for that so yes be in the here and now another good thing to know i forgot almost to mention is um no and to know beforehand before you start providing a session no session will be the same even you do the same exercises you apply the same exercises every group is different there's always different dynamics you are different every day the way you're grounded or the way what you dress or how the sky is looking doesn't matter what there's almost a lot of variables that can have impact on your session and therefore you do not have 100 percent control of making this session perfect but like i said and that's why i have this introduction for you here there are some tips and practicalities you can definitely apply to make it uh, to make the context to make the living play field um, as fruitful as possible to get the best out of this session so again me telling you to be in the here and now and not to worry too much about your script might help you to get the best out of the people uh, and also enjoy it you know that every session is different um, it's also a beautiful metaphor of life there's no you know one fixed ingredient uh, how to uh, how to make this happen if you eat the same soup it will be boring as well even though it's your favorite soup um, you know so also embrace the creativity that it unlocks in you and uh, yeah it keeps you sharp it's really a, a great thing I think to provide these sessions to to be so mindful you, know, you become really I feel that I already apply it in my daily life you know I become more more grounded and I I have more sense of what's going on and I don't have to fix things all the time I just leave it as the process as it is and let's see uh, yeah, what you can do next um, by asking great power questions, for example. 
Let's not gotta, uh, get into this. Two or three more tips. Um, your intention. What is your intention for providing this session? I think, personally, in all cases, it should be unlocking the potential of others. And I have to phrase this now. It's not about you. Um, and I'm not saying you should forget about yourself. You're not important. No, of course, you have to feel sufficient. You need to have sufficient energy to provide these sessions because it can be quite tiring, especially when you just start them. Um, but what I mean, it's not about you. It's really about what the participants take away from these sessions. So what is your intrinsic why? And if this is, I'm serving the others, I want to create added value for them, uh, then you're safe. And then it doesn't really matter how you do it, if it's with this exercise or that exercise and what people gain out of it, because they will feel that you are sincere and that you are there for them uh, and that you do not play a trick on them or you just... You know, you, your ego is uh, in the equation to show off or something. If you're really there, then for them, and they will see that immediately, um, then, um, yeah, you're halfway, you know. Um, so, yeah, your good intentions. Um, yeah, that's a nice example, too. If you're if you're not longer needed, for example, in the case of uh, Anamika, she's, uh, she was training lectures, her peer. She's a lecturer herself and trainer. Um, she uh, suddenly realized that people were engaged so much that nobody was really noticing her anymore. And she started this session, right? So she said, she told me in one of the coaching sessions online, she said, yeah, Jess, I could also leave, you know, it didn't really matter. I said, that's, that's, you know, that's, um, a big sign that you did a great job. That's the, the best present you can get that you make yourself missable. And uh, yeah, don't expect people to all the time tell you, oh, this was great and thank you so much. First of all, the outcome might not be there on the spot, but within a few weeks. And second of all, it's not about you. It's about you giving something to the group. And of course, it's nice to, to hear uh, people talking about it in a positive sense, but that should not be your intrinsic motivation. Uh, make sure that you have other things on the side that also provides you the energy where people bring you something. Otherwise, you're out of balance. But this is a little bit spiritual, maybe. Uh, but this session, when you host this session, you're really there for them. You, yeah, you're doing a, uh, you're doing some um, great act. Remember that. Trust on your wisdom. Speak from your own experience. It's very important to, to be more grounded and to trust on what you already have and what you already know. And make sure it makes sense for the audience, of course, for the people that participate in your session. Um, what always helps me when I feel that I'm talking too much, um, that I phrase literally the question, why I am saying this is because... So, for example, I explain a little bit about um, the U theory or I give some framework about how the world is changing fast and why we should become more agile. And I give some examples from my work experience. Um, sometimes I feel I kind of, you can sense it immediately. You feel there's no, not so much connection anymore. So I kind of stop and then I say, why I'm saying this is because this has everything to do with experiential learning and with your team in this organization or with you students uh, in this uh, school or with you trainers uh, in the field or with you uh, entrepreneurs that could be every or anyone that's of course in your uh, session um, so make sure you use this kind of power words if you feel still you're kind of stuck and you want to give the floor to the people you can say uh, do you have an example of your own work experience you know so people feel invited to think along with you and to to pass on an example and then you know for sure it fits because they talk about their work context right so if you feel kind of ah, i'm an interim manager maybe and i'm or um maybe a, a trainer and I do not really know what's going on in this team or in this organization, always ask them to bring up an example. So your gut feeling, uh, feelings are the closest thing we get in life to a roadmap. 
So if you feel that you're talking too much, most probably you are, and ask an open question to the audience, I would say, to the participants. Measure impact, the final tip, and then I really stop. <laughs> There's so much uh, content here, I love it, but I, will, uh, I wanna make you, uh, um, I wanna invite you to host, uh, let's do it again. Okay, the final tip, and then uh, you go out there and provide these sessions, uh, is to measure impact on the spot. It's very important uh, also for yourself it's a little feedback loop but also for the other participants that join and might still shy away for for explaining what they gained out of the session or they may, might still be a little bit there might be some people still be skeptical if people see others are raising their hands when you post the questions did you gain something out of the session which can be very concrete or very abstract if people raise their hands um, they will they uh, acknowledge the fact that there's more people that actually gain something out of these session um, and by that they think oh wow this might be very fruitful then um, so it actually reaffirms that this does make sense what you're doing and it's not just uh, an entertainment uh, session um, to pass through the time and also for people to learn from each other right they might hear each other's insights they they never thought of and this could be like some kind of double loop learning they learn from each other peer-to-peer -peer learning uh, and another reason that it's really important to uh, measure impact on the spot and I'm not talking about extensive impact uh, um, uh, questionnaires which are also very good but I leave it for another time for these short sessions this is the best way I think uh, raising hands by asking what did anyone get something out of the session and can you explain a little bit about it um, why it's also very important to do that is that people see the importance of these sessions and might want to provide a session next time themselves. So that could be another question. If there's people interested in providing these sessions or to get to know more about it, uh, please uh, come over and uh, see me um, and uh, I will help you with that and let's make this, uh, let's make this work. So uh, yeah, I think this was the final, um, yeah, the final tip. If you have any questions, please leave your questions in the comments. I will try my best to provide you from all the insights I have. Um, if not, I wish you all the luck and fun providing your first uh, hosted transform session by preceding these uh, videos and watch the next video, which is the H exercise. Enjoy.